My name is Mary von Hirschberg and uh, my wife and I, Jean, we bought the cafe in 2014. So we know that the cafe started trading in sometime between 1895 and 1902. Um, and it started in around those times, there were tram lines and so it was a tram stop and then later on it became a bus stop um, as well. So there were, well, it was on a bus route and um, yeah, so people have memories going far back. In the 70s and 80s it, and into the 90s, it was unofficially known as the Blow Café. It was painted blue, everyone called it that. Um, and then in 1996, the dailies bought it and they called it the Daily Deli. And so in 2014, when we bought, when we bought it, we took it back to its previous name and we officially called it the, the Blue Café. The cafe has got this deep heritage, but there's nothing protecting it because if we stop the cafe, if we, if we close the doors, after a certain amount of time, and it's six months, the cafe loses its right to trade. So if someone else bought the property afterwards and tried to re revive the cafe, there would, there would be no right to do that. So in a strange way, the non-conforming use right is an amazing way to, to, to take a business over, over a period of time to continue trading as it was, but you eventually get to a point where a business right for the cafe would be much better and would, would secure the next 120 years. The cafe has basically become a kind of the heartbeat of the neighborhood. So most people that have been here, uh, particularly in the mornings and in the evenings, uh, would have been here in the last few days. Uh, and then obviously a lot of people like to understand how the locals are socializing and living. And so we, we have a lot of guest houses in the area. And so it's a very cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan mixed, um, mixed group of people. When we bought the cafe in 2014, we wrote a letter to the neighborhood. We sent out letters. I mean, obviously had, we didn't have an email database, so we literally printed a whole lot of letters. And we, we explained to people that we want to carry on doing what, what they would like. So we, we're the owners of the property, they're the owners of the cafe's heritage. And so we asked for feedback. So the neighborhood cafe, you would, your staff would get to know the neighborhood well. And so we basically, we, I mean, it's not, we, weren't, we weren't not going to do this, but it was like obvious. We basically offered everyone a job in the new, uh, in, under our ownership. But we, when, when we started at the cafe, we had people who had been employed in 1998. And Adrian, who's down there, he's been here since 99. So we open at seven in the morning, the manager arrives. The idea, one of the requests, was that we open at a fixed time. So people ask for, if you, can you, can you try and be consistent because people want to build routine in the morning. So people are getting uh, food for their children or getting a coffee on the way to work. So we, we open at seven in the morning, the manager arrives and then we close at 10 in the evening, but the kitchen will close before nine. But people who need milk and need things for the next morning, whatever, can pop in on the way here. A neighborhood cafe, by definition, operates at times where you, people don't have to travel far to try and uh, avoid an inconvenience. So most of our neighborhood, most of the neighborhood trade on account and we, we have little internal fights with like in families but basically having kids not allowed to buy an account because they buy sweets and things but at the same time parents do want to have the child come and fetch milk so we have to go like well we're giving them milk but, but they can't buy chocolates as well so it's quite strange so basically we have the tables outside and obviously if the weather goes bad then nothing happens um, and there are four tables downstairs we we made the decision that if we we're a neighborhood cafe we could sell things to the neighborhood but they could sell things to us anything that is made or grown in the neighborhood we would um, we would buy and we ideally wanted and we at one point we were selling seeds and it worked for a while and and so it, it still happens is we wanted children growing vegetables at home and then bringing them to the cafe we buy them from them and they get a, they get money on their accounts and so today still we get a lot of people arriving with like baskets of lemons and and pomegranates and basically going listen we have these and then we'll create like either pomegranate juice or if we have too much we just put a basket down and people can help themselves well i think that would probably be a great definition for a neighborhood cafe something that grows with its neighborhood <laughs>